golf in the golf swing. I'm not kidding. <laughs> What is up, Watch Fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. My name is Michael, and we are sponsored by Sheath. More about their super comfortable underwear later. Today, we're yes. talking about classic TNH. We're talking about yes. value, right? Yeah. I have, this is, watches are ridiculous, right? It's all a waste of money because our phones tell better time. Fine. We know Stipulated. this. Stipulated. Yes. Move on. It's, we it's got mechanical it. art, okay? Yeah. So, while I have no problem spending money on watches, I love to spend money on watches. Oh, yeah. I hate wasting money in general. I want to get some of the best for my dollar. It's very hard to earn money, so I like to buy things um, that, that, uh, that I feel are worth more than I paid. That's that's part of the thrill of finding watches. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, to know that you got a steal, or, or and, and it's not even necessarily because you know uh, you got one that was a fire sale, or you stole it from a grandma. Like often, watches in general are just underappreciated. It's like no one's looking and saying, "Wait, is no one noticing that they're doing this for five thousand dollars?" People are looking at, in one direction at yes. really one brand, and there's all these amazing value props yes. over here. Disproportionate value. Disproportionate value right. is a term. Right? That's the key here today. Yep. So, so I I brought up five watches, okay, at different price points um, that I know uh, um, represent disproportionate value. Yep. And the first is a vintage watch that I bought not that long ago, a couple years ago. A good example is my Hamilton doctor's watch. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's a Hamilton uh, Sectron or something like that. Um, uh, an interesting, you know, so a rectangular watch with a stepped case, uh, white gold filled. Right. This is in solid white gold. Of for vintage um, filling. A vintage filling. Yeah. And uh, and, I, and I paid about fifteen hundred dollars for this watch. Right, and that's what they were worth at the time. Now they've risen. You know, they're in the they're in the three thousand dollar range, maybe a little bit more, almost four thousand dollars. So, I'll never sell that watch. I'll never realize the, the 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 profit that I that I made on the watch. I will always have that watch. So I think it represents disproportionate value. Even at four thousand, it represents really good value. But when when I saw them at fifteen hundred dollars, I said, Why isn't anyone looking at these? They're remarkable. They're absolutely beautiful. They're interesting. They're well made. They keep great time. Um, they have a everything. very cool tool to. If you haven't seen his watch, the bottom half of it is just seconds. Yeah. Because it was for a doctor. Sixty seconds. You needed to be able to see five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So they enlarged it. Exactly. An endlessly interesting watch. The only other comps that were just as good, so far as the like the the design and like the the, the quality of design from Rolex. Rolex had some great doctor's watches, you know, in the first half of the of the twentieth century, and those watches were were obviously more expensive. They were they were you know, tens and twenties, whatever thousand dollars. Um, but this watch, I said, wow, fifteen hundred bucks. It's a no brainer. Yeah. Right. I bought it. I love it. I wear it. It's a fantastic watch. It's my only Hamilton. Right. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a very cool watch. Um, disproportionate value. We'll never sell it. Doesn't matter. It was yep. still a great investment. Uh, I think another example is 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 vintage Rolex. Right now, yeah. not all vintage Rolex represents great value because once you get into the auction world and you know you're paying eighty thousand dollars for an old watch, uh, you know an old uh, uh, Submariner because people tell you that uh, it's objectively rare, but that that it's that it's. 15 times better than the regular one, than the right. regular old, you know what I mean? Right, There's right. sometimes a line of text, a color of the dial, the, the cho shape chocolate of the patina, yep. the shape of the crown, right? Frog leg, Bart Simpson, all these things. You're saying, okay, I don't really know if this is representing value. But This, is, this yeah. has become a, a really deep and rabbit hole. And the word is, value doesn't even enter the vocabulary. And it also becomes two, two people, they could be us, just sitting in the auction house and like, I don't. Know, I don't like you. Where we're competitive, like joking around, and yeah. we're eighty thousand dollars to us at that auction is nothing. Exactly, They're it doesn't represent value. value. It's it's a game at that. They're point. not looking for value at all. Right. Um. Uh. And, and that's that's the high end auction market. But if you look downstream at the approachable end of the Rolex market, there's a ton of value. And you you know you can look at you can look at sports models for yeah. sure. There's yeah. value in explorers. Yeah. Um. You know, a little bit less because they are pretty closely uh, priced to the new models. Right. A right. great. Explorer uh, that's 30 years old or 20 years old, uh, 30 years old now. Geez, time flies. Uh, a great explorer that's 30 years old um, uh, is worth, you know, 
nine thousand dollars, and the new version is probably like eleven or something, right? right so, right. or ten, or it's a ten and change. So it's like, okay, well, you know, you save a grand, but you know, it's kind of negligible. Yeah, right. But but when you look at again, I, I've been saying this for years. You look at the date just right. Uh, a new two tone thirty six millimeter date just is like twelve five or something like that, $12,500. You can get a vintage, even from the 80s, the 90s, we're not talking about a super old, you know, rinkety not old grandpa bag. watch. Right, we're right. talking about a really, a really terrific quality watch, right? Um, sapphire, crystal even, you know, Quick beautiful, date. tight bracelet, good condition. We're talking about, you know, not, we're talking, it's not exact comp but it's, it's, it's not, it's not one-to-one, but these are in the same family. It's the same watch, but the price is, is incredibly different, right? You're talking about, you know, with, it, with standard champagne dial, right? You're talking about you know over twelve thousand dollars versus mid sixes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sevens. For it's half, it's half the money. For a watch with typically much more character and much more individuality. Right. Which is the big thing. And that's another that's another big asset, right? The differences aren't even necessarily disadvantages. They're just differences, right? Yeah. It's yeah. still a you know think about it. It's a it's a you know, Rolex, uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual Datejust certified chronometer in 36 millimeters and Rolosaur. I mean, right. pretty specifically, it's the same fucking watch. Exactly. You know, in, exactly. you know, of course, there are differences, but it's, it's the same, right? That's disproportionate value. Right. That's disproportionate value that you can get a two tone Datejust at 7,000 when the modern one is, is 12 and a half. And right? almost unobtainable. And almost unattainable. Tremendous value prop, saving half the money basically and getting into the same watch. And you can get it. As That's opposed to a new issue. Rolex that you can't even you, know, you can't even get because twelve is retail. Twelve is retail, yeah. So you can't. You typically will be paying more than twelve. I have a friend that's been on a Rolex wait list for a two tone Datejust for six months. I've been on the wait list for the that's Palm right. Dial for that's how right. many months? It's crazy. Not you know? even a call. Nothing. And and of course, like you said before, it's the details when you go into vintage. I actually prefer the vintage watches. Obviously, it's it's those little nuances. It's the history. Um, you know, again, they're not rinky dink old man watches, right? Interesting pieces of history that are incredibly functional. Right? They're still chronometers. They're still keeping time perfectly, flawlessly, basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and they're 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 historic, right? So uh, there's yeah. so much charm there, um, and that's really this whole idea. This whole this whole line of thinking is really how I built. The watch shop. It was all about finding value, whether it's at seven thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars. This video is brought to you by Sheath. Christian, what is Sheath? The most comfortable boxers I've ever worn. Oh, and why? Well, I, it's, it's their design because they they separate they separate your package basically is what they do. And it sounds right. silly, I know, because it sounds silly anytime we talk about our packages. But when you talk about the actual, it was developed by a U.S. Army veteran who yes. was serving in Iraq, and it was so hot that it was not comfortable, yes. and they were chafing, frankly. So this separation. Hopefully no one is in heat like that, but it, it adds so much comfort to your daily activities. It's chafe and it's temperature. And I don't even know which one I appreciate more. Yeah. Maybe the temperature. It is so much cooler and more like, it's just it's just much more comfortable. Yeah. Via the, it's, it's cooler. That's it. That, right. that, 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 yes, the chafe as well. But for me, uh, wearing wearing sheath, um, it's, a, it's, it's just, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like getting in bed into like colder sheets. Uh, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, yes. That's what it feels nice like. I, I, it sounds ridiculous, but I, I love sheath. So yeah, that's why they were invented, to keep you cooler, to keep your temperature regulated, and also since it's becoming wintertime, sheath also has some insulation versions of this and a bamboo hoodie. Wow. There you go. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right. Well, I highly recommend you guys go and try out uh, Sheath. Um, I, it, it's always always funny buying underwear, but uh, you won't regret uh, investing. I think in in the comfort uh, of of it's you know it's the comfort of your balls. Let's be yeah. real. Let's just be real. That's what it is. You buy underwear with us. That's great. That's great. That's a lot of fun. We can watch the videos knowing we're wearing the same underwear. Yes, exactly right. So uh, click the link below, and you can use the code Theo and Harris at checkout, or go to sheathunderwear.com slash Theo and Harris for twenty percent off. And do your balls a favor. Do your balls a favor. Bye, Sheath. Show parts Alpine Eagle, right? Yeah. Now, this watch is $13,000. Well, what does it comp to, right? Paddock's Nautilus, uh, Audemars Piguet's Royal Oak, right? Those are the two watches that it's, it's punching up at, you know? Mm -hmm. And those watches are $30,000 each, right? Yeah. And uh, I, the only, the show part is an incredible watch. Yes. Well detailed. Yeah. Well we can't finished. forget the special edition one. The green one? Oh, the asshole one? Yes. Yeah, there, there is one that looks like
Maybe one that looks like a butthole, yeah. but other than that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really... But other than that, they're fantastic, you know? I would say that the one fault in, in, in the show part Alpine Eagle, mm -hmm. which is easily fixable, and, and I think it will be on, on, on newer models, I think the bracelet is not... I think it's a little bit... It's, a, it's not as refined. The, bracelet, the bracelets are not as good. Yes. Um, okay. they're, they're a quality bracelet. I just don't think that, they're, that, that the proportions were right. I think that the bracelet is a little bit, a little bit thick and a little bit clunky, I whereas agree Paddock fully. and AP killed on the elegance end. They just killed there. Right. Okay. Yep. yep. So, but but fine. So that we know that the Paddock and the AP are, are better on 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 that regard mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Is it eighteen thousand dollars better? You know that delta yeah. is hard to it, it's hard to square. You know, it, it, it's there is no uh, well the bracelet. It's like uh, you oh well the cost. Like you always will hit yeah. that first if you're looking for value. Now if it was three grand, you say okay, I, I could see why there's a three thousand dollar difference there. That's what I mean. That's a price where you're like oh, uh, well, look at the bracelet. Come on, or seventeen thousand. This is a, a lot of money for a bracelet. This is of course. About? Picturing a buyer holding both of these watches and being like, well, the actual watch itself, I you know, I love both. Right. So right. if I'm going to bring yeah. it between it, it's, yeah. it's not like they're like, well, I'll get the show part because of yeah, this. Yeah. If, 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 imagine showing a, a non-watch guy these two watches and, and then telling him the, the, the difference in price. It's the same watch. So you say, so you, wait, wait, how much more? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah, exactly. And you can't really go into the movement because the movement in the show part is, is incredibly well finished. The whole, right. the whole watch is really well finished, right? right. So so it, it, it becomes very, very difficult. So the conclusion is the show part Alpine Eagle represents disproportionate value. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that you should buy it, but if you're in the market for a you know sports watch and blah, 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 blah the, whole, the whole thing, right? There's a compelling argument to be made. Well, not a compelling argument. It certainly represents a disproportionate value. And there's a compelling argument to be made that you that you ought to buy it. Agreed. You know? Fully. Um, so that's that's another one. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is a watch that I actually have right here. Right? Very convenient. Obviously, I wrote this episode literally reverse engineering. Yes, of course. The, 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 this, of course. This is not, this is not, I'm not pretending this is a coincidence, right? Well, yes, of course. I just yeah. happen to have I, one. I happen to have the watch and it's for sale in the Theo and Harris watch shop. But um, all jokes aside, yeah. this is a long and zone is Arcade or Arcade, right? It was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was one of the first four langas that were introduced in 1994. So when the brand was reborn after it was, I mean, basically uh, uh, stifled, I mean, shut down, just kind of killed yep. uh, by the war, by, by, the, by the war, obviously, in, in all of... In quite, you know, the, the World War. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the World War the way it really encapsulated the most, of the, one. most of the earth. Uh, the, the Hitler one. And right, right. Um, it, uh, the, the brand was destroyed. And yeah. it was a legacy German watch manufacturer. Obviously, we know the Swiss with watchmaking, but the Germans are remarkable, right? And, mm -hmm. and Lange is, is one of those companies. And when the brand was relaunched in 1994, this was, only, this was one of the only four watches that they, that they introduced, right? First of all, it's remarkable that they came from the dust and then released four watches as opposed to one. And just a couple of years later, they released the first in-house chronograph. It, the whole thing is nuts. But... Right. But the Longa story is remarkable, and this is at the beginning of it. And it has all of that Longa Zona uh, um, uh, design language, right? Yep. Immediately, um, you could tell the biggest design. The large date. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now, wh why does this watch deliver disproportionate value? Well, at, at right, right below $15,000, we say, okay, well, what else are we, what are we getting for $15,000 in this category elsewhere, right? Okay, so what is the category? This is a, this is a very... You know, it's a methodical way yes. to look at to look at this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's precious metal dress watch. Okay, um, a, or a, a, a precious metal elegant dress watch, and it also has date. Okay, from a notable brand. From a notable brand. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, Hotterology. Yes. Right? Okay, so you're looking at time and date. Well. Look at Cartier. There's no date, but it's still a comparable watch. Sure. Right? This is comparable to a Cartier tank. Mm -hmm. The Cartier tank Louis right now, which is priced at Ten thousand two hundred dollars mm -hmm. is quartz, right? It's eighteen karat yellow gold. It's, just, it's 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 a watch that you would consider in the same breath as you would consider this Longa, right? But it's 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 ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars and it's quartz, right? You say wow, okay. So the Longa, what it and it is forty percent more money, but it's mm -hmm. ten thousand to, to fourteen thousand. So really, they're in the same you know they're in the same yeah, league. Yeah, yeah. They're in the same league. For most people, considering a ten thousand watch, a fourteen fifteen thousand dollar watch isn't going to exactly. make them gasp. Exactly. Right now, the Cartier, when they put the mechanical movement in it, mm -hmm. as opposed to the quartz, which they don't do in all their models, but in a Tank Louis with a black dial, they'll do mechanical. Yes. And it's 
$12,800. Now, $12,800 to $14,800, that's only $2,000 difference, right? It, it, it mm -hmm. Really close comps. And you cannot, and I love Cartier. You guys know I love Cartier. I'm a huge fan. But on a very objective level, they, they're not, they shouldn't be mentioned in the same breath. These two watches are on different league. They're in completely different leagues. Not only is there great history here and mm -hmm. great design mm -hmm. with the large date and all that stuff, and there's plenty to be said about wanting to buy a Longa as opposed to a Cartier because really they're in different leagues. Longa is certainly, you know, a, a league or two higher than Cartier. Yes, yes, right? yes. In, in, in hot horology's Unless concern. the Cartier is this... Fourteen thousand a Cartier is sixty thousand when you right. get to matching right. that way. Now, but but the, the the movement right the construction going on here in Cartier the, it's it's the, the the default is quartz you have to upgrade to a mechanical for an extra twenty eight hundred bucks. Of course. Here the the movement which is classic Langa the L nine eleven dot four is perfectly finished hand engraved German silver. Um, it's these two companies are not even trying to achieve the same thing here. That's a good way of saying Longa it. Longa is that's trying to make a watch it. that's fit for royalty. Of course. And the Cartier, and I love Cartier, but it's trying to make a, you know. I have more of your Cartier. Yeah. It's just yeah, like they're course. trying to make a, you know, the same watch they've been making for a long, long time, and not a lot of originality or effort went into it. This now. Maybe then it did, but now. Now no. it works. And I still love them. But you can't compare these two things. The Longa is, is leagues and leagues above. Yes. Okay. Yep. It represents. Okay. That's Cartier. Talk about you talk about uh, uh, okay equal comp for hot horology, which is above Cartier, but now in that league of Longa, Vacheron, all these other brands. Yep. Uh, Paddock. Um, the time only mechanical watches from those brands are in the twenty five thousand dollar range. So when you're getting the comparable level of watchmaking, because I mean I still argue that Longa is generally delivering even more than those other brands because they, they do. We always Longer, say, Longer you know, does deliver more. Right. Um, but let's say that they're a wash. They're $10,000 more money. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. So it's crazy to think about the value that, that early, I mean, early Longa doesn't pack that much value because it's so, so expensive. But the arcade specifically, because of its smaller proportions, um, this watch was like unisex. The other watches were targeted specifically towards men, and this yep. was the unisex model, um, which I think fits very well on my wrist, but obviously male or or female. Um, it's ridiculous value. Yeah. It's it's insane what this watch does at fifteen thousand dollars or less than fifteen thousand when the comps are priced in twenty five and the quality here is actually better. This is old Lawyer's office, they write with a solid gold pen. Yep. You know what I mean? They wear ultimate class. Watch. Yeah, oh yeah. You know. Everything ultimate. they have a, a folder that's just like perfect full grain leather that they open and they write exactly. in. Exactly. It. It's one of those. And, and the solid gold buckle, everything. Obviously this watch does come with its box and papers and everything like that. Yep. Um it's a lovely, lovely watch and I've been enjoying I've been enjoying it uh, immensely. Um but I just can't help but to, you know, to, to think about the value that it represents at its price point. Now, back to investment. When you buy the Cartier, when you buy the, the uh, this Longa, when you buy all these, well, actually, the Longa, the Longa is what I would call a stable, right? Stable place. Right. Uh, probably, like most, like a lot of collectible watches, it will appreciate. These watches will appreciate. There's no doubt about that. But a lot of this other stuff, mm -hmm. immediate immediate depreciation. You yeah. buy that new Cartier for 12 8 it's worth, you know, it's worth 9 the next day, you yeah, know? Right. Um, you buy the the Patek Calatrava, the the twenty five thousand dollar watch. That's as far as a construction level, it is inferior, right? Mm -hmm. For twenty five, you know, it's worth nineteen, eighteen. You know, you look at so, it this way. You tell me how much that watch cost. I talk to you five years later. If it's up a respectable amount, I'm like, okay, I don't have an argument. Right. You buy a Cartier tank from today. You buy it today. You walk yes. out of the store. I want to buy it from you. I'm not paying retail. Right. Even if it's you walked out and gave it to me. Exactly. Why would I pay retail? Exactly. 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 Now, of course, when you're looking at vintage and vintage Cartier, they become great investments and great, you know, but but I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, of course, we're talking about vintage. It's fine. But comp to comp, it's crazy how much value this watch this watch delivers. Yeah. And there's one more that I, one more watch, one more example that I want to talk about that, again, Disproportionate value at its at its at its price point. Um, not to say you're going to make money if you buy one, because you certainly you know you, you won't. Um, but look at Oris's Pro Pilot X. I don't want to keep this conversation all about Paddock and Longa and Rolex and Cartier. It applies all the way down the line, meaning just to, towards approachability. It's not a it's not a downline watch. It's a great watch. Of course. Um, their 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 regular model is forty three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and their their skeleton is seventy six. Both of these watches, especially the skeleton, if you both of these one. watches deliver incredible value. Both of these watches have this 
in crazy like original right it's not just proprietary it's, yeah, yeah, it's an original design like this remarkable design they reinvented how you put the watch on and take it off to, yes. be, to be a SIPA, like an airplane seatbelt. it's, it's a pilot's crazy watch. how much effort went into this and how much brilliance on the design level went into these watches mm -hmm. and you can get one at 4200 bucks yeah in right? these beautiful colors as well right and, and the movement on the skeleton is just unbelievable they actually developed because it's a 10-day reserve they developed this proprietary system it's a non-linear power reserve Reserve indicator, uh, which you see at three o'clock, obviously through the skeleton, mm -hmm. yep. that shows obviously the remaining power, right? The way that they were able to not just architect the case, yep. but architect the dial and movement, showing all of these complex systems in an attractive manner. Brands do less, not do that. Less than five thousand well, dollars. Well, well, that well, that one is at seventy six thousand. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. But still, less yes. than ten thousand dollars. Right. Brands would. It has to be a loss leader. It, there's it's the money there's that no went to point. design and development alone. Exactly. That'd be remarkable. Exactly. Remarkable. Yeah. So again, I'm not saying if you're going to buy it, invest in it, you're going to flip it and make money. Not what I'm saying. Right. But, but if I bought that watch and you're saying, oh yeah, look at my watch, it is at least double. Yes. At least double. At $7,600, no, no one, probably no one has a better watch than you if they spent within, if they spent below $7,600. And frankly, oh, to, yeah. get, to get a comp for that, you're probably going into the, the teens and 20s. You're looking at, I mean, Cartier does some skeletons, Breguet does some skeletons, different, precious metal, these are titanium. Yeah. But Jesus Christ, that is a, uh, if you look at investment as just, I bought it, I bought into something that, that, is, that is, by all logic, worth a hell of a lot more than I paid. Yep. I, they, they delivered too much. Yeah, it's a score. Yeah. It's a score. So, so those are my examples. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I live and die by that idea of value. Um, uh, I have no, it's a luxury space. We're all wasting money, right? We're spending money on something that is antiquated. Our phones tell better time. I know yes. this. Yes. So it's all dumb. Um, but we're so passionate about so many aspects, whether it be the history, like we saw in Langa, whether it be, the, well, again, like with Langa, the, the, the quality of the movements, mm -hmm. uh, whether we're talking, about, uh, we're talking about design, there's so much to fall in love with here, because so much of it is, you know, it's mechanical art, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's, it's, it's all stupid, but, but I, still wanna, I still wanna find value. Of course. So I, I have no problem spending money, but I don't like wasting it. Yes. You know? Yeah. So anyway, that's my spiel. Go take a look at the Theo and Harris watch shop. Take a closer look at this Langa because whether or not you're looking to buy it or not is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Take a closer look at these photos because the watch is f***ing unbelievable. It's unreal. I mean, an original piece of Langa history from 1994. Yeah. I mean, think about that. It's wild. These, they only made these watches for three years. So they're really the, the rarest model within that collection, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's wild. So anyway, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you all soon.